Welcome to Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine. In this episode, Mark is going to show you how to shape shots into the fairway. And Karen's going to show you how to hit half shots to the green. Enjoy the show. Sit back and relax <laughs> and enjoy. ninth hole at Simsbury Farms. Today we're going to take a look at the half swing. When we use it, why we use it, and how to use it. I'm sure you've found yourself in a situation where you're between clubs as you approach the green. What you want to do is use a half swing. I'm going to demonstrate first of all what a half swing really is. When we take the club back, we want to have a nice hinge. We're still hinging and turning, hands no higher than the waist most important thing as we hit this shot is to make sure that we're still accelerating through the shot. Many people will decelerate thinking that the half swing is a softer swing, but when we abbreviate the back swing and continue with a pretty full swing on the follow through, that acceleration becomes very important for hitting down on the ball, getting the ball up in the air, and a nice soft landing onto our green. The mechanics of the swing, we begin at a dress position, and with a, with a soft shot, we're going to play it about one ball closer to our back foot. Club comes back and hinges. The important thing with this shot is that the club stays in front of your body the whole time. As opposed to a, a full swing where we take the club back, we're going to stop the club, hands about waist high. Loaded up still on that right side, we drop the club into the slot, rotate through, finish down the line to our target. The important thing with this shot, one, is that we get the hinge in there. So often we'll see a half shot where people only take the club back here. If we have any kind of ball that's nestled down, we're not making contact with the ball. Definite hinge. Second mistake we see quite often is a deceleration, thinking that because it's a half shot, we have to hit it very softly, when acceleration is what we're looking for definitely through the shot, and a finish about waist high again, pointing towards our target, and also facing our target. The half shot is also a drill that we use often in teaching. It teaches you impact position, it also teaches you the swing plane, and it gets you bringing the club through the body with acceleration. Love to use this in teaching when we have people having a little problem making clean contact with the club. This drill bottoms out the swing, teaches you where impact is, and also teaches you hinging, unhinging through the shot. Again, we set the ball up about one ball towards our back leg, take the club up waist high, acceleration through the shot, finish facing my target. at the 14th hole at Simsbury Farm and as you can see we have a brand new bunker. And with me today is Doug Beach, course golf course designer. Doug, tell us a little something about your background. Well, I grew up here in Simsbury, Karen. I uh, graduated from the high school in 1972 and uh, my first job was here at Simsbury Farms. I worked two years in the pro shop in 73 and 74 and uh, two, two summers on the maintenance crew in 75 and 76. So. I have a love for this place and uh, I left for 27 years and couldn't stay away and now I'm back. back. And we're glad to have him. Doug has done all of the design for the new bunkers. Fortunately, we've been able to do most holes of the course um, thanks to his designs, but also to the help of Mike Wallace and his crew. Tell us about the cost that's incurred redoing these bunkers. Well. We're fortunate to have Mike Wallace because he not only is the superintendent of the golf course, maintains the golf course, but he also has the ability to do this kind of work. And not everybody can do that. Uh, you have to be an artist. 
Uh, you have these big, huge machines. You have to be an artist to create these shapes. And Mike fortunately has that ability. And therefore, we were able to do the work in-house. We didn't have to get an independent contractor involved, and we're able to save a whole lot of money in the process. So it was a win-win for everybody. Excellent. Doug, what was the reason for redoing many of these bunkers on the course? Well, we did an analysis, Karen, and uh, obviously the bunkers are 40 years old. That's how old the golf course is. It's hard to believe, but it is. <laughs> and um, uh, there were some problems. Some of them didn't drain properly. Uh, many of them had a poor quality of sand as a result of pebbles and uh, dirt migrating up from the bottom of the bunkers. Uh, there was a disconnect between the bunkers and the surrounding areas as a result of people hitting shots out of the bunkers for 40 years. Uh, they take sand with them and it was creating an edge. Sometimes the bunkers were higher than the surrounding terrain and that's not no. good. And then, frankly, a lot of the bunkers just were not attractive looking. And a big part of golf courses appeal for me is, is how they look. And uh, so I think that's very important, and I think that's something we tried to handle as well. Doug is going to tell us a little bit now about the steps that go into recreating, remodeling these bunkers, starting at the beginning with the old bunkers that we're happy to be rid of. I'm happy, too. The problem is the golf course is 40 years old and as you can see over the years they've been adding sand and the routine maintenance and also people have been hitting shots out of these bunkers for 40 years. So you see there's a disconnect now between the sand and the surrounding terrain. You can see how this is built up uh, instead of being down like a bunker should be. You can also see the worn turf around the edge of the bunker. That's a result of the grass trying to grow in dry sand conditions, which uh, is very difficult, so it's not attractive. Uh, another problem we have is pebbles. The quality of the sand, there's rocks and pebbles which uh, are a hindrance not only to maintenance, but to the people who are trying to hit shots out of the bunker. Finally, you can see the bunker itself. It's, it's not attractive. It's just a, a blob, basically. And we wanted to put a little bit of shape into it, make it look interesting to the players. Uh, some of the bunkers on the golf course also have drainage problems. Uh, they don't drain well after rainstorm, so we needed to correct that as well. Here's an almost finished bunker complex. We don't have the sand in it yet, but it's getting close. You can see how originally we had two bunkers, or excuse me, one bunker here. It was like a big long ramp. It was probably about a 10 or 15 foot elevation difference inside the bunker. Here we've split it into two separate bunkers. It's more like stairs, stair stepping its way up the hill. The bunkers are a little more bowl shaped. You can see the drainage pipes inside underneath the tarp. We've got a, about a six inch edge where the sand will be placed. And uh, I think it's pretty darn good looking too. So that's gonna make it not only function better, but it's gonna be more interesting and better looking for the players. You can see the last step, the guys are putting in the sand. Uh, they're dumping it in. They're using a, a trap rake to uh, push the sand around. And uh, soon that will be finished and we'll let it settle for a few days and it'll be opened for play. And this, Doug, is a brand new bunker here on number 14 at the farms. What was the purpose in putting a bunker in on this hole? 14 is a relatively short par 5, and a lot of the guys try to go for the green in two shots. The girls do too. Well, I think both the guys and the girls need to think a little bit before they go for that green, know that there's a little bit of trouble here. Uh, one of the concerns that was given to me previously was that the golf course has become a little bit easier than it was 40 years ago because of the new equipment. The fact that the golf ball goes farther than it used to. Technology so, in the clubs. Exactly. So we needed to strengthen this a little bit and I think this bunker does the trick. Oh, it's awesome bunker. <laughs> Doug, what other changes would you like to see in the course in the future? Right now we're concentrating on the green side bunkers because we think that's the most important part of a golf hole and we want everything consistent. But I would love to be able to finish all the bunkers on the golf course and even add a few because I think adding a few is going to give this golf course a real wow factor. 
Absolutely. Uh, that will bring in people from out of town who are going to hear about it. And I think it'll just, overall, it'll spend a little money, make more money. I'm all for that. And I think that's what we should do. I agree. Doug, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Simsbury Farms Golfing Magazine. I wanted the people in Simsbury to understand how fortunate we are to have not only you, but Mike Wallace and his crew, and explain a little bit about our new bunkers up here at the farms. Thanks, Karen. It's great to be back. Okay, we are talking about working the ball today and we are really looking at this shot as a, a shot we need to work the ball here right to left. A shot that's become famous in we, recent weeks. Bubba Watson hit his drive a little bit weary on 10 at the uh, Masters and had to really work the ball out of some trouble. We're going to see here we are in some trouble. We've hit our tee shot over here on the 8th hole at Simsbury Farms Golf Course to the left. I'm blocked out with a straight shot. I have to work the ball right to left. And again, in this case, much like Bubba, but the opposite, Bubba cut that shot on, on the Masters, but we are gonna aim out here to the right, and we are working the ball back to the left. It's a shot that sometimes you might not get back to the green. A shot that sometimes you just need to get back in front of the green or to the fairway. Don't try too hard to make the perfect shot here. Bubba did. We're out here. We're not on the Masters. We need to kind of just take our time and control the shot. But it is important to know what a troubled shot is and what working the ball is. And a right to left shot or the opposite, a left to right shot. So now we're head up to the driving range and, and show you what we need to do to work the ball right to left or left to right or our little knockdown lower golf shot. Today we're going to talk about working a shot. Working a shot means that we're going to work a ball right to left or left to right. And this is a case when we're out, let's say, on a par three or we have a shorter approach on a par four and a shot calls for a little bit of a work right to left or left to right. Depending on where the bunkers are, depending on how the wind is blowing, we're going to show you how to hit this shot. This shot is not for everyone and a lot of golfers up here try to work the ball a little too much. They're going to end up getting into habits of slicing or hooking the ball. We're going to work on today just little cut shots, little draw shots, show you how to keep the ball a little bit lower against the wind and go from there. Starting off, we're going to talk about just a slight grip change here and we're going to make sure that when we're doing this and we'll start off with a shot that's going to be promoted to draw a little bit more, a little right to left shot. We're going to show you a normal grip. In a normal grip we have our hands over the club in this particular manner. On a shot that we're going to try to work a little bit more right to left, again with a little draw, we're going to bring our right hand down in this manner just a little bit, just a slight slide down of the right hand. That's going to cause our club to start to spin or rotate a little bit more through the ball, working on that ball now turning right to left. Okay, the other one before I hit some shots here is going to be a little left to right shot, a little cut shot. It's a shot that might not get you the distance. You might want to think about going up a club if you're going to hit this shot, but again if the shot requires it, a little cut shot could help. We're going to bring the hand over a little bit more. Less hand action in this shot. We're bringing the club a little bit outside and working the club in. Less hand rotation. The ball is going to tend to slide off the club a little bit with a little side spin. Again, we don't want to get into the habit of thinking about slicing the ball here, but a slight cut shot is going to help you working the ball left to right. As we take some shots, and again a standard shot first as we set up to the ball, I have a 7-iron out here today. We're not worried about ball position too much yet. Ball right in the middle of my stance. Normal grip. I'm taking my swing back and turn and throw. Hitting a normal golf shot straight at our target flags. When you come up to the range and you start wanting to work on this, the first step here, and we're going to again start off with a shot that's going to be a little draw shot here. A little right to left. Target line is still down there, about 150 yards out blue flag. However, I'm going to start off closing my stance just a little bit. This is going to, going to help you to start to rotate the hands a little bit more, promoting more of a draw. Again, slightly different grip pressure here. Again, the hands down here a little bit for, further. I'm setting up the same way with the ball still in the middle of my stance here in this shot. I'm closed off to the target. I'm about 10 yards or so aiming now to the right of the target. Now as I take my same swing, back, but as I come down to the ball, again with my little grip change here, 
I'm gonna allow my hands to rotate a little bit more. This is gonna produce a little draw. Again, we don't wanna get into the habit of thinking we're hooking the ball, getting that club too far inside, getting stuck in here, and using all hands. For the most part, it's our same rotation of the body. Just a slight bit different as far as where our hands are. Okay, you can see the ball now is gonna to start to take a little five yard, 10 yard draw towards the left. Again, if there's bunkers or so right in the middle of that green, I need to work around those bunkers maybe. That's where I would now use that little draw shot. Let's do one more. Again, close stance. Grip my right hand down a little bit, producing a little bit better rotation with the hands coming through. And I like that one. Again, that's a little solid. Again, producing a little draw, letting the ball come around. Now the opposite is on the other side. Again, if we have to have a, a shot that needs to cut a little bit, a little left to right shot, we're changing it again. And the first step here again in my stance is gonna be different. I'm opening up my stance a little bit. My target line with my feet now is going to be a little left of target. I wanna produce a little cut shot, a little left to right shot. Again, the grip change, I'm gonna come over the grip a little bit more, getting the right hand out of the shot a little bit. Again, now as I change my swing going through, I'm gonna let my club come outside just a little bit. Again, we don't wanna get into the habit of starting to produce a slice here. I don't wanna cut across the ball every time, but I am gonna think about coming outside just a little bit more, coming across the ball just a little bit more, and allowing that club to slide off. Without the right hand doing much here, I'm gonna allow the ball to kinda of cut back to the target line. Again, a shot needed out there. If there's bunkers or that pin is located, let's say on the right side of the green and there's bunkers right in front of it and you don't feel like you can get up over those bunkers, wind, wind could cause a factor there. We wanna cut the ball a little bit there. Open stance, blue flag still my target line. I'm aiming left of that blue flag. And we cut it back towards the target. And that's a pretty good shot right there. I'm happy with that. Again, just a five, maybe 10 yard cut. We're not looking for a big slice here in this shot. Again, let's do that one more time. Open stance. I'm aiming with my hips a little bit open. I'm gonna tend to now come across the ball just a little bit, keeping my right hand out of it. Still finishing the same way. Again, we still wanna make sure we're getting our body rotated. We don't wanna stop our hips in this shot though. We're still staying down with our upper body. We're gonna come down through the ball the same way. A little chunkier, but again, we still have a little cut shot there as we start to head back towards our flags with that shot. Pretty good and not too bad. Again, you're gonna see this shot most of the time with a shorter iron. Shorter irons won't move right to left, especially with the modern clubs. They're not gonna move right to left as much. We have to make the little grip changes. We have to change our stance a little bit and we help that ball move left to right or right to left. Last shot we're talking about here is a little bit of a lower ball flight. And a lower ball flight usually is very helpful, let's say if the wind's in our face. And we wanna keep that ball a little bit lower. Up in the wind, the ball will tend to die, lose distance. We're gonna place this ball a little bit more towards the back of our stance. Again, I have the same club out here. Okay, so I'm just a little bit more towards the back. Again, we're hitting a straight shot, not worrying about working the ball right to left here in this case as much. Back of the stance, I'm gonna go back the same way. However, in this shot, I'm not gonna really hinge up all the way. I'm not gonna let my club go back in a full, full swing here. I'm gonna take my hips and rotate them, but I'm keeping my club in a sense a little bit closed up top. The toe is not completely open up in here. I'm a little closed. From here, I'm gonna take my club down and try to pinch the ball a little bit right there behind it, keeping it a little bit lower and swinging through. A lot of lower body turn still in this shot, but keeping it lower. In my initial setup, balls again towards the back foot, but you notice also my hands are a little head. Kind of a chip shot or pitch shot setup here. Taking it back and keeping it a little bit lower. Relatively straight, more of a penetrating ball flight against the wind. And that will really help you when we're working on shots, the wind's blowing in your face, you, let's say, don't want to go up two clubs or three clubs because you all of a sudden don't want that five or four iron in your hands. 
Maybe go up a club when that wind's in your face and work on keeping the ball a little bit lower. And that would really help. So just to review, again, we have our draw shot, our right to left. We're gonna close our stance. We're gonna have our grip change slightly. We're gonna allow the club to rotate a little bit more through our shot, producing a right to left. The opposite, left to right shot, a little cut shot. Hand on top of the grip a little bit more. Open stance, and we're gonna cut across the ball just a bit. And that's gonna allow for the ball to move left to right. Last shot we did was that lower knockdown shot, a shot you would use against the wind. Ball towards the back of the foot, hands a little bit ahead, closing the club just a little bit back there, still hinging, but as we come down, we're gonna allow the club to come down and through, still rotating the hips, and that will keep the ball a little bit lower, and that's gonna help you when the wind's in your face. Thank you. Welcome to Simsbury Farms. <laughs> <laughs> Golf Magazine. He's going to take a steep angle coming back. <laughs> right. The object was to get it out of the sand. <laughs> ready. Oh, I forgot what I'm starting with already. Airway. And Karen Bally, assistant golf professional at Simsbury Farms Golf Course, will show you how to hit short shots. Half, <laughs> half shots, too. <laughs> ready when you are, Go CB. ahead. You ready? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, boys. Again, just to go over some of the techniques again, she's going to put the ball more towards the back of her stance. She's going to hood the club just a little bit. She's going to take it back about three quarters, and then she's going to finish nice and low, keeping her arms down next to her hip. You can cut that one out when you do it. Cut three. Are we still rolling? Welcome to Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine. In this episode, Mark Fisher, assistant golf professional, will show you how to shape a shot into the green. Yeah, let me get a better lie. We'll make sure it goes in the air. Okay. In the woods. It'll be like this. It'll have the a little thing. I wish I had a rules official. <laughs> and then you come in. Hello. Welcome to Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine. In this episode, Mark Fisher, assistant golf professional. Open up the club. Open up your stance. And hit the ball. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cut. <laughs> Welcome to Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine. In this episode, Mark is going to show you how to shape shots in the fairway. And Karen's going to show you how to hit approach shots, short shots. Half shots. <laughs> half shots. Half is swing. it half shots? It's a half swing. Karen, what are you doing? Don't you know you got you to tee off between the two markers? Rule states that you have to tee off in between the two markers and you can go back at least two club lanes. You can't tee off in front of them. Thank you, John. What if I were to tee off from this spot? Well, you incur a one-stroke penalty. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks. Can that go on the blooper reel? <laughs> what is the penalty for that? What would happen if I hit that ball? Well, in stroke play, you incur a two-stroke penalty. But in match play, I could have you elect to tee off without a penalty, or I can elect to have you t where the ball was played from. You go what? from there. What are you talking about? <laughs> Welcome to Simsbury Farms okay. Golf Magazine. In this episode, Mark is going to show you how to shape shots from the fairway. And Karen's going to show you how to hit half shots <laughs> to the green. <laughs> Welcome to Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine. Mark's going to shape shots, and I'm doing half swings. <laughs> In a hand. Club comes down into sl the slot. We accelerate through, finish up high. This is just so terrible right now. <laughs> it's a relatively short par four, a uh, par five. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, Welcome yeah. to Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine. Me and my arm candy. <laughs> All right, okay. Mark, open that club up. Quick hinge going back. Let it go. <laughs> Perfect. 
<laughs> Hold on. You're about three feet away from being a good shot. All right, Mark, let's hit one. Open the stance, club open. Quick hinge. And a shake. Heads up, Kenny! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you can throw that other ball back. <laughs> Simsbury Farms Golf Magazine is brought to you in part by Simsbury Farms Pro Shop for all your golfing needs and also Atilio's at Simsbury Farms. Great views, great food.